Hello, hello. Welcome back to Peak Northwest, an outdoors and travel podcast by the Oregonian and Oregon Live, dedicated to the adventure and exploration of our beautiful Pacific Northwest. I'm Jamie Hale. And I'm Vicki Connor. Together, we take you to some of the most beautiful and interesting destinations in our region, discussing where to go, what to do, and places to see. And today, we're doing a little stargazing, looking up into the night sky to see one of the best astronomical events of the year. That's right. We're talking, of course, about the Perseid meteor shower, one of the strongest annual meteor showers and arguably the best one to watch from the Pacific Northwest. And while the Perseids are technically active from July 14th to September 1st this year, they will be reaching their peak this weekend on August 12th and 13th. Vicky, on a scale from 1 to 10, how psyched are you for the Perseid meteor shower? Honestly, <laughs> Jamie, I don't know much about it. So <laughs> as you take on this role of astronomer at the Oregonian and Oregon mm-hmm. Live, I mm-hmm. am so excited to hear more about it and uh, what we can expect out of this. Yeah, well, the the Perseids are pretty cool. I got to say, I've, I've actually only gone out to see the Perseids once, and it has been a while. Um, but it is a really, really cool show. I got to say, have you have you done much like meteor shower watching? Have you done it before? No, because here's the thing. <laughs> I'm not great at like waking up in the middle of the night or staying awake to see something. So if it's anything past like... <laughs> 9 p.m. Count me out. I'm asleep. <laughs> so you do have to stay up a little bit later than 9 p.m., but it's not like a 3 a.m. assignment here. Um, so I, I figured since the Perseids are coming this weekend, and because this year happens to be a really good year to see them, we would spend the show today talking about all things Perseid. So Vicki, um, why don't we start at the beginning? What What are the Perseids? You might be asking yourself this too. What is a meteor shower? What are these things? Exactly. I am, in fact, asking myself (laughs) this question. (laughs) Okay, well. What is actually going on in the sky? (laughs) So the Perseid meteor shower occurs as the Earth moves through a debris path left behind by the Swift-Tuttle comet. So the, the comet last passed the sun in 1992. And when a comet passes the sun, it sheds all of this like ice and dust from it and leaves behind this like stream of debris. So when the earth then passes through that stream on its like annual trip around the sun, it, uh, all of that stuff comes into the atmosphere and burn and it appears as a, a shooting star or a meteor shower. So you're seeing these streaks of like ice and rock and debris coming into the atmosphere as we pass through all of this stuff in space. Pretty weird, pretty cool. Um, So it happens pretty reliably this time of year, every year, um, I guess until the debris stream is done or it moves or something crazy happens in space. But at least for the last few decades, this has been a reliable uh, meteor shower. And because there's so much debris right now, it's been like really strong. And the the nice thing too about being in Oregon is that it's August. We don't have the, you know, the the clouds that are socking us in for months on end. So we can actually see this thing this time of year. Amazing. I love it. And so is Perseid is the name of the comet and henceforth the name of the meteor shower? No, the comet is Swift-Tuttle, which I'm sure is the the name of the people who found it, who saw it. Um, Perseid comes from the constellation in which the meteors appear. Perseus is the constellation. So that's that's where the name comes from. So um, if you want to go out and and look for the, the, the Perseid meteors, what you do is you go out into you know, after sunset, you go out into somewhere dark. So you want to get away from the city if you can. Uh, Most rural places are going to be pretty good, but the darker the sky, the more meteors you can see. And you want to look to the northern skies to, I mean, if you're a constellation person, you can be like, oh, look, there's Perseus. If you're not like me, I look at stars and they're just a bunch of stars. Um, So you just look to the north (laughs) and kind of look up. And eventually, if you wait long enough, you will see the meteors start coming and they come at a pretty good rate at peak. 
So in, on August 12th and 13th, these peak dates, you can expect to see somewhere between like 50 and 75 meteors per hour. So that's like, you know, one or so a minute, um, which is pretty good. Uh, and if you're sitting out there, you can sort of just see, you know, one streak by, and then you wait a little while longer, you might see one or two streak by. Um, it, it's just sort of a nice way to lounge outside. Maybe you grab your blanket, uh, a mug of tea, maybe some snacks, and you just lay back and hang out with your friends or your family and just watch cool little streaks of light in the sky. I mean, how romantic is that? So, so cool. Uh, Jamie, did you set out to see this last year? No, because here's the thing. It's, it's not great watching every year. What will often determine how good you, how good of a show it is, is the light of the moon. So obviously city lights will disrupt your ability to see the Perseids. The light of the moon does too. So if you have a full moon or anything close to a full moon that is up at the same time these meteors are coming, it's going to drown out a lot of what you're able to see. Um, Last year, it was not great conditions. This year, however, uh, it's it's really honestly about as perfect as you can get. Um, So we do have a little bit of a moon this year. It's a crescent moon. Um, which is not going to give up that much light to begin with. But here in uh, Western Oregon, the moon sets in the early evening. So by the time the sun sets and you're going out to look at the meteors, there's not a moon in the sky. So that allows these darker skies to uh, you know, allow you to see more meteors. So this year, I think, is really the year to go. Um, combined with the fact that like, although there are, are there are wildfires burning right now, we don't have smoke covering a lot of the sky in Oregon. So most places you can go, you don't have to worry about clouds. You don't have to worry about smoke and you don't have to worry about the moon. This is a really, really nice time to go try to see the Perseids. Is the Northwest a particularly good spot for seeing this? And not necessarily. I mean, you can see it from a lot of this hemisphere um, and a lot of the world too, right? Um, it, it, the, the dates are pretty much the same for everybody. Uh, the planet is just moving through this this debris field. Um, the, it, I would say that it's not that the Northwest is a good place to see the Perseids. It's just that the Perseids are a good shower from the Northwest to see. There are some really good meteor showers, um, in like October, November. Um, but I mean, if you lived here, you know, that's not a great time to like go stargazing usually. (laughs) Um, sounds damp, (laughs) damp, it's cold. You can't see anything. You can barely see the moon that time of year. Um, So this is like just, uh, if you're in the Northwest and you want to see a meteor shower, like this is the one you go see. Okay. So when we're telling people where to go out, do any places come to mind um, if people in the Portland metro area are looking to find a good, good spot a little bit removed from the city to watch this? Yeah. I mean, what you can do is you can look to um, where the star parties are. So uh, local astronomy clubs and also OMSI will um, often put together these star parties where you have a bunch of like stargazing nerds out there with their big telescopes, um, very, these big family events. Uh, I've gone to a couple of these. They're very cool. Um, you can just, people will just let you look through their telescopes. Someone has theirs trained on like a planet. Um, some has trained on some distant, like, you know, nebula stuff that like you didn't know you could just see through a a telescope, you can see really well. It's very cool. And there's people on hand to tell, tell you more about the meteor shower, more about the cosmos um, or whatever. So um, these star parties typically happen at two places around the Portland metro area. One is um, LL Stubb Stewart State Park. Um, one is at Rooster Rock State Park. Uh, this year for the Perseids, there's no star party at Stubb Stewart. So don't go looking for people there. But there is one happening at Rooster Rock. So if you are looking to go somewhere pretty close to town, you maybe want to have some people um, to to talk to about it or to to learn a little bit more, check out the OMSI Star Party at Rooster Rock State Park. It is um, going to be happening on August 12th, that's Saturday, um, after sunset. Free admission, but you got to pay $5 to park. Um, But it's just a really beautiful location, a, a pretty good spot as far as dark sky goes. Um, and just a wealth of information. And again, what time in the night are we talking about here? 
really as soon as the sun sets, um, as soon as it's dark out, you can go outside and, and look for these. Um, and obviously when you go to like a, a star party like this, um, you're going to have people who are there to point out stuff to you, but you could go really honestly any old place. There are a lot of really good dark sky areas in Oregon where you can see, you know, the, the meteors, or if you want to see any kind of astronomical event, or if you just want to see a bunch of stars. Um, I love taking people who grew up in urban areas out to like any dark sky part of Oregon and just watching how their brains melt at how many stars they can see. <laughs> it's such a fun experience to be like, oh my God, you can see the Milky Way. And it's like, yeah, you sure can. You really can see it. Any um, any particularly specific areas that you're thinking about? Yeah. Um, basically, you want to go out to a central Oregon, eastern Oregon, get on the other side of the mountains. Um, that That's basically what will help you out. But Steens Mountain is a really great spot to go and Alvar Desert out there too. Those are two like primo stargazing spots. Um, mm-hmm. Bend is just generally, I know it's, you know, closer in, there's more lights, but there's um, uh, the Sun River Observatory out there um, where you can go um, pay admission to go there and, and do some stargazing uh, as well this weekend. Um, even parts of the coast. Uh, I, I've been out to like the Southern coast. Um, Sunset Bay had a really good stargazing experience there. Uh, just really anywhere where you're going to be away from away from light is going to be fine. But those high desert areas, um, lower Klamath Basin, um, Christmas Valley, I mean, just get out there. Get out there as far as you can, um, and you'll, I think, be in good shape. So I take it, Jamie, you're going to try and get out somewhere, right? <laughs> I'm going to be busy this weekend. <laughs> <It's> a, ah! <laughs> I know. It's the same. Like the, There's like the, the uh, a big eclipse later this year that I'm also going to be busy for. Um, the, the stars did not align with my personal calendar. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to miss a lot of this stuff this year, but the beautiful thing is that, you know, the Perseids do come back every year. Every year is not great conditions to see them, but like, you know, um, there's always next year or the year after that, or the year after that, every year brings some sort of cool astronomical event to see. Uh, and I think just seeing them here and there as you can over a lifetime uh, builds up, uh, I think, a really cool experience and broadens your understanding and experience of the space around us. Definitely. Well, I have someone coming in to visit this weekend, but going to Rooster Rock, um, staying up a little bit past my bedtime (laughs) to see this meteor shower (laughs) sounds like a good time and something fun to show uh, someone visiting the area. That's right, Vicky. And, you know, there, there's a lot of other stuff on the calendar, too, for folks uh, who may miss it, like myself, um, like you. It, you know, the, the, aside from the Perseids, we have this big supermoon coming at the end of August. Um, a supermoon basically just means a moon that's a little bit closer than usual. So it appears to be like a little bit bigger and a little bit brighter. It's honestly just a really cool word and a good excuse to go look at the moon. Um, but August 31st, we have a a blue supermoon, meaning it's a second of two supermoons in one month, which is a thing that does not happen very often. Uh, very cool. We've got our annular solar eclipse, which is not a total solar eclipse, but like a kind of a ring of fire eclipse, they call it, happening October 14th. If you want to listen to more about that one, we have a whole episode dedicated to where you can find best spots for that. That's right. Um, lots of great stuff. And of course, like I said, once we get into fall, uh, it is like meteor shower season. Um, you have the Orionids in October, the Leonids in November, the Geminids in December and the Ursids in December, all kinds of meteors. But again, tough, tough time to see them here in the Pacific Northwest. So, um, you know, if you're able to find some clear skies and take a look at those, very cool experiences. Otherwise, I'd say, hey, go take this opportunity now, this weekend, go check out the Perseids. Absolutely. If I'm awake, I will be out there. I will be at Rooster Rock. You can find me there. (laughs) Set an alarm on your phone. Get a nap or something, you know, take a thermos of coffee. I don't know. Uh, 
Well, Vicki, uh, that's all we have for this week. Um, folks, uh, until next time, you can watch our videos on the Oregonians YouTube channel and view all of our travel and outdoors coverage on OregonLive.com slash travel, as well as HereIsOregon.com. Please leave us a rating or review if you enjoy the show. And if you want to support this podcast as well as our local journalism, please consider a subscription to Oregon Live. You can find details at OregonLive.com slash pod support. Also, if you're a fan of the show and you're interested in potentially sponsoring it, you can get in touch with our marketing people at advertise at Oregonian.com. This episode of the show is produced by me, Vicki Connor, alongside Jamie Hale. Stay safe and happy travels, everyone. Until next time, we leave you with this 10 seconds of Zen.